Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem 6 from 2022 German National Math Olympiad. And this was suggested by one of the users on my channel named Alex. So thank you for the suggestion. So here is the problem. Suppose f from r to r, meaning that the domain is r and the codomain is also r, satisfies all of the following. First one is f is multiplicative. In other words, f of x, y is equal to f of x times f of y for every two real numbers x and y. Second one is f of x plus y is less than or equal to 2 parentheses f of x plus f of y. And third one is f of 2 is equal to 4. The question is asking us to prove that f of 3 is less than or equal to 9. So I'm going to tell you what I did, what my thought process was, and how I achieved to a solution. So some of this stuff I'm going to talk about would be stuff that are not really useful in the actual proof, but hopefully it gives you an idea of how to approach the problem. Okay, so the first thing that you try for any of these sorts of problems involving functional equations, functional inequalities, is to plug in some values. That one is kind of uh, the most natural thing to do. So uh, naturally, I started plugging f of 0, just x equals 0 or y equals 0 to see what we get. We get f of 0 times f of y. And that tells us that f of 0 is 0 or f of y is equal to 1. That cannot happen because f of 2 is in fact 4. So that can't happen. Okay, so the conclusion is f of 0 is 0. Now I tried the 1. So f of x equals f of x times f of 1. For the same reason f of x can't be 1, can't be identically 1. So that means f of 1 is equal to 1. And I also know f of 2 equals 4, but apparently we cannot actually find f of 3. So the next thing that I did was I tried to evaluate some other values of f. So it's pretty easy to see that if you do f of 2 times 2 by the assumption, that's f of 2 times f of 2, which is 4 squared. And then if we do it again, f of 2 cubed, that would be f of 4 times f of 2. Both of those are squared. That's 4 squared. That's 2 squared. So that's also 8 squared. And that, by induction, you can see that f of 2 to the power of n is equal to 4 to the power of n for n greater than or equal to 0, and of course, n is an integer. Then I was wondering what happens if I look at negative exponents, and that one was also not difficult to see. f of 2 times 1 half is f of 2 times f of 1 half, and uh, since we know f of 1 is 1, that would give us f of 1 half equals 1 quarter, because this is... 4. So similar to what we did above, we could also say that f of um, 1 fourth is 1 fourth squared, 1 over 16, etc. So the conclusion is f of 2 to the power of n is equal to 2 to the power of 2n or 4 to the power of n for all integers n. Okay, so so far it's good we, we were able to find all powers of 2. Next thing that I did was I tried to see if I can find something about f of 3. So f of 3 is f of 2 plus 1. So that's like this, the most natural thing to try. And by the second condition, this is less than or equal to 2 f of 2 plus f of 1. Now we know f of 2 is 4 and f of 1 is 1. So that gives us unfortunately something less than, uh, something more than 9. So we were able to show that f of 3 is less than or equal to 10. But it's actually not very helpful because we are trying to show that it's less than or equal to 9. Next thing that I did was I tried uh, to evaluate to look at things of this sort, like f of 3 plus 3. That's less than or equal to 2, f of 3 plus f of 3. And this wasn't very helpful either um, because that just gives me 4 f of 3. And on this side, I actually know this is f of 6, which is f of 2 times f of 3. So this is just 4 f of 3. <clears throat> so this is actually not helpful at all. Um, then I tried other things like 1 half plus, um, so if you write down 3 as 1 half uh, plus 5 halves or 3 halves plus 3 halves, none of these really gave me much uh, better than what I had. So then I decided that perhaps I'm not using all of the assumptions, um, uh, all of the assumptions to the full extent. So what I decided was to see what happens if f of 3 is more than 9. So what if f of 3 is say 10? 
what goes wrong let's see what goes wrong and hopefully we can use that idea to get to a uh, solution um, as I see here, if I tried f, when I tried f of three plus three, like if I add them, it doesn't look like it gives me a whole lot. So I decided that I should probably use the multiplicativity up there. So f of nine, f of nine is a hundred because it's f of three times f of three. Um, on the other hand, I can write down f of nine based on things that I know. I know f of eight and f of one. If you use the second inequality, that gives me f of eight plus f of 1. I know f of 8, that's 64. I know f of 1, that's 1. So that's 2 times 65, which is 130. So that tells me that f of 9 is less than or equal to 130, which is clearly not very helpful. But I thought perhaps I'm actually in the right track because here on this side, I'm looking at powers of 3 with the caveat that, um, I'm sorry, on the right I have powers of like 4 uh, because I will have 8 squared which would be a power of 4 with the caveat that I'm also including like a 2 in front. On the left I have powers of 3 so maybe when I increase the exponents um, I can kind of get a contradiction here. So then I decided maybe I should try f of 27. I can write down f of 27 as 16 f of 16 plus 11, which is less than or equal to 2 times f of 16 plus f of 11. Now let's substitute f of 16 and also f of 12. So f of 16 is 16 squared. f of 11 is less than or equal to 2 times f of 8 plus f of 3. And this is what I get. So this is 2 times 16 squared, which is 2 to the power of 8. So 256 2 times um, 8 squared 64 plus um, f of 3 I guess okay so let's evaluate this and also substitute f of 3 by what we know so this would be uh, 512 plus 4 times 64 plus 2 times f of 2 plus 1 so this would be 512 plus, so this is going to be uh, 256 again, plus 8 times 3. Okay, so that's nice. Uh, no, I'm sorry, this is 5, because this is 4 plus 1, which is 5. Okay, so this is uh, seems to be getting us something better, because this is actually not too large. So this is 700, uh, 808 so what I got is f of 3 cubed is less than or equal to 808 which means f of 3 is less than or equal to cube root of 808 which is obviously not true because this side is actually a thousand 10 cubed is a thousand and that gives me a contradiction so that's the that's the contradiction that I was hoping to get okay so this was very promising so what was the next thing that I did? I was trying to uh, to hopefully turn that into a rigorous proof, um, but for that I would have to just prove this is true for um, every f of three that is more than more than nine. So if you look at uh, what happened here on the right side, um, when I looked at say, f of like say twenty seven, I wrote it down as powers of two, so I did. 2 to the power of m, n plus 2 to the power of m, etc. And I wrote it down as less than or equal to 2 times 2 to the power of 2n, f of this is 2 to the power of 2n, plus f of the rest, 2 to the power of m, plus etc. So I was hoping to get some inequality. And then I can use maybe that to get to a contradiction. So this one is clearly just 4 to the power of n. So this is basically like kind of like scoring this one. Not quite though. So I decided maybe I have to have some inequality like that. f of x less than or equal to some c times x squared. Then I tried different values of c and I realized that if I try c equals 4, it becomes almost valid. So is it true that f of x is less than or equal to 4x squared? Because if you look at this inequality that I have here, there's a 2 here, but there's also some change left over here. So this 2 is probably going to have to be increased. And if you try 3, you'll see that there's going to be some issues with 3. So I tried 
4. So let's see what happens if you do f of x less than or equal to 4x squared. I'm going to see if I can prove this one. So first of all, for x equals 1, and I'm going to just look at uh, integers because 3 is an integer. I'm not really worried about anything other than integers. f of 1 is less than or equal to 4. That's obviously true. f of 2 is also less than or equal to um, 16. So that's true. So let's try to see if I can actually prove this one by induction. So if I look at f of x, how can I go from f of x to f of x plus 1? One way would be to use the inequality that they gave us. f of x plus 1 is less than or equal to 2 f of x plus f of 1. And you kind of see that this is also not going to be very helpful because this gives us 4x squared plus 1. This is a quadratic roughly 8x squared, but on this side we need roughly 4x squared. This is like roughly 4x squared, the other side is roughly 8x squared. So that is not uh, going to happen. So I need something better. I need to uh, be able to write it down using the inequality, but not x and 1. I need to have some balance between the two, because x and 1 are far from each other. That gave us something not very good. So then I thought maybe I will have to take cases of even and odd and use the inequality to uh, break it down into two different portions. First of all, if x is even, if you have 2x, then this would be f of 2 times f of x, which is 4 times f of x, less than or equal to 4 times 4x squared, and this is uh, 2x squared uh, times 4. Okay, so we do have the inequality. We can go from x to 2x. Then I tried 2x plus 1, this would be less than or equal to 2 times f of x plus f of x plus 1, which is less than or equal to 2 times, this one is less than or equal to 4x squared, and the other one is less than or equal to 4x plus 1 squared. This would give me 2 times 4x squared plus 4x squared plus 2x plus 1, which is 2 times, let's evaluate this, this would give us 8x squared plus 8x plus 4. Now, I was hoping to show, the goal was to show this is less than or equal to 4 times 2x plus 1 squared. So if I factor another 2, I would get 4x squared plus 4x plus 2, which unfortunately it is 4 times 2x plus 1 plus 4. So that is not very helpful. So I have this uh, 4 that is bugging me and it's not going to uh, give us the inductive uh, step. So next I thought, okay, so this shouldn't be that much of a uh, problem. I just, have to, um, I just have to adjust the inequalities. So here is now basically what ends the solution. So f of 2x plus 1, and so I'm going to claim that f of x, I mean, there's a little bit left after that, but that's like the key part. Claim is f of x is less than or equal to 4x squared, minus 2. If you try minus 1, you'll see similar uh, issues are going to happen. So we're going to claim this and we're going to uh, prove uh, this for induction for all x that are positive integers. First of all, x equals 1 clearly gives you the inequality. x equals 1 and 2 are easy to check. And after that, what we can do is we can try f of uh, 2x. f of 2x is 4f of x, which is less than or equal to 16x squared minus 8, which is less than um, 4 times 2x squared minus 2. Okay, so that's the first thing. Next, we'll look at f of 2x plus 1. That's less than or equal to 2 times f of x plus f of x plus 1. And that is less than or equal to 2 times 4x squared minus 2. And then 4x plus 1 squared minus 2. This would be, if I factor a 2, I will get 4 times uh, 2x squared minus 2. I'm combining the two 2's. And then plus 2 times uh, x squared plus 2x plus 1. So this gives me 4 times, I get 4x squared, the 2, uh, 2x squared get add up to 4x squared plus 4x. And then I actually don't have any constant. So this gives me 4 times 2x plus 1 squared 
because that's what I'm trying to get to and then minus 1 which is less than 4 times 2x plus 1 squared minus 2 so that's nice so we prove the inequality by induction so therefore what we have is this f of x is less than or equal to 4x squared minus 2 for all x in positive integers now we don't actually need the negative 2 so in some weird way sometimes when you're trying to prove things by induction it is easier to prove something that is stronger rather than something that is weaker as you saw the weaker inequality of less than or equal to 4x squared was more difficult to prove um, than the the stronger inequality of f of x less than or equal to 4x squared minus 2 but really I only need the f of x less than or equal to 4x squared so the final result is this that I'm gonna be using okay now we are going to replace x by 3 to the power of n so this would be less than or equal to 4 3 to the power of uh, 2n now we're gonna use the multiplicativity so this would be f of 3 to the power of n is less than or equal to 4 3 to the power of 2n take the nth root of both sides you get f of 3 less than or equal to nth root of 4 times 9 now as n approaches infinity we get f of 3 is less than or equal to this is 4 to the 1 over 9 since this is true for every positive integer n um, and this is n is a positive integer since this is true for every positive integer n when you let n to go to infinity this approaches 0 4 to the power of 0 is 1 and this would become less than or equal to 9 exactly what we wanted now if you are not familiar with the idea of limit here is how you can actually finish it up without using any limits with just pre-calculus so suppose f of 3 is more than 9 so what do we have here what we have here is f of 3 we're going to get a contradiction. So what we have here is this. f of 3 over 9 is less than or equal to 4 nth root of 4. So f of 3 is more than 9. What I'm going to do is I'm going to raise both sides to the power of n. So f of 3 over 9 to the power of n is less than or equal to 4. That would be problematic. Why? Because you can write this one down as 1 plus f of 3 over 9 minus 1 to the power of n less than or equal to 4. Now I'm going to use binomial expansion on the left this would give me 1 plus n choose 1 which is just n f of 3 over 9 minus 1 plus change less than or equal to 4. Now notice that this is positive so everything here is going to be positive. So what does it mean? It means n times if you drop every other term you get n times f of 3 over 9 minus 1 is less than or equal to 4 which would mean n is less than or equal to 4 uh, divided by f of 3 over 9 minus 1 and that is obviously a contradiction because you cannot have um, a number that is larger than all positive integers so therefore f of 3 is less than or equal to 9 and that brings me to the end of the solution now I haven't really put a lot of thought into this but I wonder if there are any functions other than f of x equals x squared satisfying these three conditions so if you if you find another function satisfying these three conditions I would be curious to see what that function would look like and I will see you in the next video